everyone and welcome to this presentation on survey research. This is going to be a very short one, but um, it's important as it covers some uh, important terminology. Okay, so per your textbook, survey research involves asking questions of a sample of people in a fairly short period of time, and that was way too fast, but okay, um, the goal is to test a hypothesis or describe a situation based on the answers to a survey. So most people think of surveys in this form or via the internet, but there's different types of survey research, and I'm going to go over all of them now. So let's talk about um, the first main sort of category of uh, surveys, which involve questionnaires, and there's different uh, ways that they can be administered. So there's what's called group administration, where everyone who is uh, taking part in the survey is in one place, and a researcher or a research assistant is there to administer the survey and answer any questions that might come up from the participants. The second type uh, of questionnaire administration is called mail administration, and that's where the questionnaire is mailed to the participants. Uh, the only or one of the disadvantages of this is that it does require follow-up uh, in terms of asking recipients who have not turned in their surveys uh, to, um, to do so. There's also what's called a household drop-off, where the questionnaires are left with household members. So someone actually goes to the individual homes um, and asks people to participate in the survey, drops off the questionnaire with a self-addressed stamped envelope for them to send it back or they arrange a time for the survey to be picked back up. Um, but again, with this, oftentimes the, there's a, a follow-up required, especially if the researcher has asked them to uh, mail back the instrument, I mean the survey. And then there's uh, administration via the internet. And this is something that's very common these days in terms of people taking surveys or participating in surveys at their leisure, at home, or um, wherever they would like. The second main type of survey involves interviews. And that can be in person. Um, this is something we talked about before, and you've seen this image multiple times in different uh, presentations. Um, but what I want to add here is that the interview can take place um, in the researcher's lab. Um, it can take place in the participant's home, and it can take place at a public location. Any of those places can work depending on the uh, research questions and, and what all is involved in the study. Now, your book goes over uh, three sort of types, if you will, of in-person interviews. So the first is what is called unstandardized, then there's non-scheduled uh, standardized, and then schedule standardized. Now, with the unstandardized version, this is something where there's a guideline with a few questions, and the researcher is really more involved in a conversation with the participant, going wherever the participant leads in terms of answers. They can ask different questions depending on what comes up. Um, they can rephrase things in different ways. Uh, they can definitely ask what are called probe questions, which are usually just sort of follow-up questions like, oh, tell me more about that, or what did you mean exactly? Can you just clarify for me? Or um, just anything that will ask for more detail. Then there's the non-schedule standardized, which is kind of in between unstandardized and schedule standardized. So let me do schedule standardized first. Schedule standardized is where there's a set list of questions that have to be asked in the same order usually um, with uh, usually no rephrasing um, and, and very few probe, probe type questions, if at all. So 
you see, what you can see is kind of like two ends of this continuum of standardization. One is very loose and the other is uh, very rigid. So somewhere in between is the non-schedule standardized where there is a, a standard set of questions and general order to them, um, but the interviewer is free to ask probe type questions um, and to sort of follow the um, participant in terms of where they're going. Now, if we add a laptop to this image, so instead of the interviewer taking notes by hand, if they have a computer with them, then this is called computer-assisted interviewing. Um, this can be anything from just having the questions there and then typing out one's notes um, as the interview is taking place, or it can involve sophisticated software that actually goes through the questions um, in a certain order, if it's programmed to um, skipping certain questions depending on what answers are given, uh, etc. Then we have um, the second type of interviewing, which is over the telephone. And I would add um, FaceTime or Skype or any of those under this category as well, uh, although it's kind of maybe in between in person and telephone. But in any case, it's uh, similar to in person. It just takes place over the phone. And again, if we had a laptop or computer, to the telephone interviewing, then we get what's called computer-assisted telephone interviewing, or CAT. I think that's pretty much all I have to say about survey research. Oh, and one quick thing. Um, when it comes to unstandardized interviews, um, they're usually in person, and that's less survey research and more uh, qualitative. So um, I would actually classify unstandardized separately under qualitative research and not under the general category of survey research like the book does. Okay, well, that is it. Thank you for watching and listening and paying attention, and I will see you next time.